Welcome to the Husky Bamboo Podcast. It's the sign for the podcast, meaning that it's about nothing in particular. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Husky Bud Woo. This is your Husky Bud Woo Ariel Duran, returning again for another solo podcast. Don't shut off your player as of right now, please. Just bear with me. We can have fun together, just us, right? I mean, we don't always need someone uh, next to me to make things more entertaining, right? We we don't really need that. I'm trying to psych myself into it. Anyway, how's been your week, guys? Uh, same old, same old. Pandy still running around. Actually, I think here in DR, we're actually flattening the curve finally after, what, six months? Yeah, half a year. <laughs> we're flattening the curve. That's good news. Uh, barely any death deaths. There you go with my uh, retardation of saying the English language. Uh, barely any deaths this week. So uh, that's good news. That's great news, actually. Um, less reported getting sick and contaminated because the curfews have been in, in being taken in place, uh, although there's a group, a big majority of the group of the nation who is requesting to remove uh, the curfew because it seems that it's so hard to be at home after seven during the week and after five on the weekends, because you have to understand, I live in an island full of savages, to say the very least. It's not to insult them. It's just that, like, if you see videos of what happened before they reinstated the curfew, you would give me the reason why I use the beautiful term savages. I could use other ones that also qualify, but let's stick with savages because it's not so much insulting. Actually, some people would even consider that uh, like me exalting them. Uh, so I will keep the the, the comment on uh, savages. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed last week's podcast. Uh, it was good for what it was, a solo podcast like you're getting right now. But I did promise you something this week, and I intend to, I intend to uh, fulfill that promise. And that promise is to read you some of the ill shit in the Bible. Now, uh, I'm not going to do it right away, because if we did... That would be the podcast. (laughs) So we got to milk this thing a little longer to justify, you know, the time. Well, so just letting you know up front that's coming. And it's a beautiful story, by the way. I mean, George R.R. Martin couldn't have written it even better. I believe this is the story that he was referring to when people were criticizing him for uh, the Red Wedding and, uh, you know, and Game of Thrones. Uh, well, that certainly had a great ending, didn't it? The less said about that, the better. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed, I'm a very difficult person to get a read on, except when I'm doing this, because I don't know how it comes across. Maybe an asshole could be the top qualifier uh, after that weird, which is well, you know, normal. Uh, after that, well, the truth is I'm an introvert. I don't really get the opportunity. No, strike that, not opportunity. I rarely want to interact with people. <laughs> I think I've established that already. And I pretty much think that any of you that have been sticking around for these past now 20 episodes... I've been like, yes, we get it. Get on with it. You know that old uh, Monty Python joke from the that movie, The Holy Grail. Anyway, uh, so I've been... What this week has been uh, for me has been more of doing memes. Yeah, well, you know, the meme generator. I actually have that app. And started doing memes. And one of the memes that I did was, and I saw that people actually even started uh, showing it on their social media, people that I know, and did not give me credit. But I'm not, I'm not that type of guy. 
I don't call out people for not giving me credit. Awkward silence. Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's just jokes, folks. Just jokes. I hope you get it. If not, then you don't. So uh, I made a meme about uh, people uh, wanting to send me friend requests, which still happens, by the way, in Facebook mostly. It amazes me. Amazes me that people want to uh, make friends with yours truly. It's like I don't know if they listen to the podcast or if word of mouth, because for what I see is mostly people from uh, I guess work, uh, and since we're not uh, physically looking at each other anymore, they're like, well, let's see what his life is about, and they want to throw in whatever I have post on Facebook and FYI. Whatever I post on Facebook is what I post on Instagram. Twitter pretty much is just a dumpster fire, so I rarely tweet. I, I just only uh, add whatever I put on Instagram. Instagram is basically where I mostly live in uh, Facebook. Uh, I mean, in the Internet in terms of social media. But uh, with all the news is that uh, all the Jesus Christ with all the news Jesus, I mean, can you tolerate this? I can't. Uh, anyway, um, with all the news uh, this week, uh, the one that pissed me off most about social media was the fact that Facebook wants to find or close accounts of bands that post live concerts on their <laughs> on their feed. And I'm like, um, you know, other than the whole uh, Knights of the Zodiac, Saint Seiya, uh, Dragon Ball, uh, Super uh, Marathons that I see on Facebook, that's what you want to cancel. Bands wanting to promote their own shit, their own product. Bands like maybe, I don't know, Metallica that actually own their own songs and own their own record company. And you want to shut them down for showing their art to others fuck you facebook fuck you in the ass fuck you in the ears fuck you with every orifice that there is in your body if you have one uh basically fuck mark zuckerberg for doing a stupid ass fucking decisions decision jesus christ what the hell is wrong with me okay uh another faux pas that was quickly corrected once a certain former presidential candidate came in to the picture was one that happened last weekend. I think I didn't get to catch it. Once it did happen. Was the edict that Vince McMahon. Vinnie Mac. Vinnie Moneybags. Uh, from WWE. Uh, said that wrestlers. Cannot uh, use third party brands. To promote themselves. Because that hurts. Quote unquote WWE. Therefore, they were mandated to eliminate any third party brands that they were uh, making themselves famous, such as Twitch, uh, anywhere they were making videos and trying to make revenue out of. Uh, Vince McMahon made a need like, no, you, we own your image. We own your name. We own everything about you. So therefore, you have to pay the piper. That means us. Anything that you do has to be approved by us and has to be done by us. Where we get the money and you get some some chump change. Basically, that's what it said. Then uh, the outcry came from fans and everybody else that knows how to read the law. Including Andrew Yang, former uh, Democratic presidential candidate. That proceeded to rip Vince McMahon a new asshole. Uh, by explaining that uh, the vague contract term that is used on WWE wrestlers namely called independent rest uh, independent contractors is bullshit because if you're independent contractor you are allowed to pursue outside ventures because you are technically not an employee hence the independent contractor name but wwe doesn't treat their uh, wrestlers like independent contractors they treat them like employees as in you are exclusive to us you belong to us your image belongs to us, and the name we provided you belongs to us. Now, uh, when the edict came from WWE, there were a lot of wrestlers that protested, uh, mainly Paige, uh, 
Although she did change her name, the name of her Twitch channel to her actual or real name. Uh, uh, she did so, but she said she was not going to quit Twitch because she was earning revenue. She is currently not wrestling. Uh, she is, was forcibly retired due to uh, back or neck injuries. And basically, uh, Twitch is her not, I wouldn't say main revenue, but is a good source of her money to come into. And you just don't say no to that type of money. And it's a good chunk. I don't know specifically the numbers, but I think she said it was a good chunk. And we'll leave it at that because yo no llevo vida. That's for you, uh, non Spanish speaking. That's that I don't follow everyone's life to know everything every single detail that is there i'm just saying the news and i know this is wrestling related and honestly we'll all get on with it but this is important because it set up a president and the fans complained it and yang complained and he said that if he ever if the democratic uh party does win the elections in november he will be on biden's ear to make sure that rules do change in against wwe's the contracts in terms of naming it independent wrestlers and making sure that shit like Vince was trying to do uh, doesn't fly. So after that public fiasco, uh, Vince kind of changed his tune and changed the wording on what he was trying to say. Uh, and and he said that, no, uh, you should just use your real names to continue to use your Twitch or whatever renovating you because uh fyi and if i didn't explain this before i'm sorry uh i'm going here off the cuff but wrestlers uh the wrestlers in wwe most of them like i would say 80 to close 85 percent of them are gamers so twitch is a big thing for them and since and also they have lost uh, all house show or live event or revenue and live event merchandise because they get a piece of the pie wherever they go to the cities. And since the pandy has been around, they've been pretty much stuck in the same place and they've been going home, which it's fine that they get to go home, but they get to get a little less of that coin of that money. So, uh, the Twitch channels was a little help to buffer that less income and that helped them to, you know, pay their bills and whatnot although you would say but they get handsomely paid not all of them most of them even took pay cuts now thanks to the pandemic because wwe uh, states that they are struggling economically speaking although they have actually <laughs> gained more money this year than they did last year which is fucking bonkers if you think about it like the the crack a code of how to make money in the middle of a pandemic but i digress so, uh, so like I was saying, Vince, uh, backtracked a little and he said, as long as you do it under your real names, we're all good. We will not, uh, uh, stop you from continuing doing your gaming channels. Now, in some wrestlers that didn't apply that much, uh, like AJ Styles, he actually owns that name. It's trademarked by him. He's always been AJ Styles wherever he goes. His real name is Alan Jones. Uh, but, uh, his, uh, he owns the name AJ Styles and therefore that didn't affect him that much. But other than that, most wrestlers, uh, you know, their, uh, wrestling names have been created by WWE and WWE does own the copyrights like, uh, page WWE owns that name. So, uh, good that uh, Vince swallowed his pride on that one and allowed the wrestlers to feed their families in a justly manner and stop being a greedy fuck, you old perverted piece of shit. <laughs> like I know him. Uh, like he listens to this or he doesn't even fucking care. Uh, although I've had my little problems with WWE in the past. Uh, I, you see, I, I, from time to time I promoted my little uh, store I have in T Public. That at which the links are in the bio. Once you listen to this, you can check the bios on every podcast. All the links are there. Just hit the ones that says the all links related to Husky Bud Boo. Click on that one. Look for the one that says T Public Store, and you will find there the T-shirts. Not only T-shirts, but you will find masks, uh, laptop covers, cell phone covers, 
posters, whatever the hell you want. Uh, if you like the things that I do, the art that I did, the designs I did, there you go. You can get it there. And some change will drop on my side. So that way you get something that you like, probably. And I'll get something on the side, which is some money to buy shit on eBay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that T Public Store, it had a lot of more, a lot more designs back in the day. A lot more, but I had to remove them or forcibly had to be removed a bunch of them. Why? Since I'm a mark, uh, that's a wrestling term for a wrestling fan. Uh, I did a lot of wrestling themed, uh, uh, t-shirts and I did one that got a little popular, uh, back when the phrase was hot, which was beat up John Cena, which was a drawing of the, uh, that I did of John Cena getting hit by chairs, uh, uh getting kicked. And whatnot. Uh, don't look for it because it doesn't exist anymore. WWE took it down because they sent me a cease and desist. And they proceeded to do that with every single design that I did. Anything that was related to re professional wrestling. Uh, they send a note to T Public. And by the way, I, it's not like I was doing gangbusters with that, uh, beat up John Cena t shirt. It was like, eh. I mean, if I made $20 out of it, well, that's a lot. Because you got to understand the percentages and how uh, T Public pays their designers. It's not everything. It's like a change. And also, and if you get it under a discount code, I get even less. And I, I think I'm breaching contract by saying that kind of stuff. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, that happened. And so I have my little history with WWE. And now nah, maybe that I've buttoned heads directly with Vinnie Mac, but, uh, yeah, the, they, 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 they have not let me make money. I mean, I would understand why they would do that because they do own the likeness and the character names and whatnot. And I was just, you know, trying to see what, I, what was allowed, you know, playing the field to see what was allowed to be done. And automatically I just found out that you don't fuck with WWE. Their lawyers are on top of shit. So, uh, after that boring ass introduction that you guys probably don't give a shit about, let's go into the meeting greedy and fulfill the promise that I made last week about talking about, uh, some very ill shit in the Bible. Things that George R. R. Martin would be blushing right now. So, allow me, if you will, to me read you from this version of the Bible, which is the new English translation, because I'm, I'm not gonna butcher, uh, the language. So without they art, they are, and you know, English is my second language. I really, uh, I struggle with some words and I'm going to butcher some names here just to let you know, FYI, you know, but, uh, if you need context and if you have a Bible, <laughs> this sounds like a Bible study. <laughs> uh, the text is, uh, the text in question is in Judges chapter 19 and I'm going to read the whole thing because it is that damn good. Uh, the title I love as well, Sodom and Gomorrah Revisited. That, that kind of gives you a hint what this is going. Let's go. In those days, Israel had no king. There was a Levite living temporarily in the remote region of the Ephraimite hill country. He acquired a concubine. For those of you who do, are not aware of the word concubine, that is side chick. <laughs> from Bethlehem in Judah. However, she got angry at him and went home to her father's house in Bethlehem in Judah. When she had been there four months, four months, her husband, so now the dude is the husband. Look, look how this shit changes. By the way, uh, Levite. A Levite, are, that was a separate tribe in Israel. I have to give you this context so, so like you would understand what is going on. Levites, uh, like that tribe in Israel of the 12 tribes, they were like the holy tribe because all of the Levites had to work altar related stuff. So the temple, well, in those days, there was no temple with the stories going on, but uh, they were like the hookups with God. They were the ones that were tight with God because those are the families that uh, worked directly with God. So uh, this guy was supposed to be a holy man and he had a chat side chick. Who, who was living with her dad because she got pissed because it was a side chick. 
and all of a sudden the dude changes from uh her lover to her husband i wonder what happened there <laughs> okay let's keep on reading when she had been there four months her husband came after her hoping he could convince her to return he brought her with him his servant and a pair of donkeys so brought her a car basically <laughs> when she brought him brought him into her father's house and the girl's father saw him he greeted him warmly because this dude is an authority dude his father-in-law now the father-in-law yeah now we're all legal right uh, the girl's father persuaded him to stay with him for for three days and they ate and drank together and spent the night there on the fourth day they woke up early and the levite got ready to leave because the dude wanted to, okay uh and uh, nice knowing you do it and all that but i need to fuck this chick uh but the girl's father said to his son-in-law i have a bite to eat for some energy then you go on and then you can go on i mean then you can go so the two of them sat down and had a meal together then the girl's father said to the man why not stay another night and have a good time when the man got ready to leave the father-in-law convinced him to stay another night he woke up early in the morning on the fifth day so uh, he could leave but the girl's father said get some energy wait until uh, later in the day to leave so they ate a meal together and the man got ready to leave with the concubine and his servant his father-in-law that the girl's father said to him look the day is almost over stay another night since the day is over stay another night here and have a good time <laughs> Uh, th that word is going to come to reference later. You can get it up early tomorrow and start your trip home. But the man did not want to stay another night. I mean, he was done. He was like, fuck it. I I've eaten enough. He left and traveled f as far as Jebus, that is Jerusalem. He had with him a pair of uh, saddled donkeys and his concubine. When they got near Jebus, it was getting quite late, and the servant said to his master, Come on, let's stop at the Jebusite city and spend the night in it. But his master said to him, We should not stop at a foreign city where non-Israelites -Israel live. We will travel to Gibeah. I think that's the pronunciation again. I might be butchering it. He said to his servant, Come on, we will go into one of the other towns and spend the night in Gibeah of Rama, or Rama, sorry. Uh, so they traveled on, and the sun went down when they were near Gibeah and the, in the territory of Benjamin. They stopped there and decided to spend the night in Gibeah. They came into the city and sat down in the town square, but no one invited them to spend the night. Uh, this will come into uh, <laughs> attention later. But then an old man passed by, returning at the end of the day from his work in the field. The man was from Ephraimite Hill Country, from the Ephraimite Hill Country, and was living temporarily in Gibeah. The residents of the town were Benjaminites. And when he looked up and saw the traveler in the town square, the old man said, Where are you heading? Where do you come from? The Levite said to him, We are traveling to Bethlehem, in Judea to the remote region of the Ephraimite hill country. That's where I'm from, and I had business in Bethlehem in Judea, but now I'm heading home. But no one has invited me into their home. We have enough straw and grain for our donkeys, and there is enough food and wine for me, your female servant, and the young man who is with your servants. We lack nothing. That's a very indirect way of telling him we're not looking for shit. We got shit. We just need a place to crash. The old man said, everything is just fine. I will take care of your head, of your needs. Don't, but don't spend the night in the town square. <laughs> Emphasis on that one. You will see later. So he brought him into his house and fed him donkeys. They washed their feet and had a meal. This dude just keeps eating. The fuck? This dude is just fucking glutton. Just keeps eating and eating and eating. The whole chapter until now has just been this Levite eating, 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 eating. Anyway, they were having a good time when suddenly some men. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> when suddenly some men in the city, some good for nothings. This is what the translation says, by the way, people. 
surrounded the house and kept beating on the door. They said to the old man who owned the house, send out the man who came to visit you so we can have sex with him. How sweet. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? This fucking you turn out of nowhere. Oh, it gets better. The man who owned the house went outside and said to them, No, my brothers, don't do this wicked thing. After all, this man is a guest in my house. Don't do such a disgraceful thing. Here are my virgin... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here are my virgin daughter and my guest concubine. I will send them out and you can abuse them and do to them whatever you like. The fuck? <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh god! Christ! He just pimped out his daughter and the dude's girl side chick! Oh. <laughs> just like that! Pimped out! Oh my god! Oh. But dude, don't do such a disgraceful thing to this man. So the, the important thing is don't rape the dude, but here are the bitches. Fuck them. Oh, God. The man refused to listen to him, so the Levite grabbed the kiss concubine. Listen to this. It wasn't even the old man who did it. It was the dude. He grabbed his own side chick and like, you know what? Let's get this shit over with. Grabbed the concubine and made her go outside. <laughs> Oh, and this, this, this nice watch, rape, uh, just listen. They raped her and abused her all night long. <laughs> Until the morning. They let her go at dawn. Oh, uh, now you know why <laughs> this podcast is titled, Is Train Writing? <laughs> oh my god. The woman arrived back at daybreak and was sprawled out on the doorstep of the house where her master was staying until it became light. When her master got up in the morning, opened the door of the house, went outside to start her on his journey, there was the woman, his concubine, sprawled out on the doorstep of the house with her hands on the threshold. Christ, they fucked her to death. They fucked her to death. They fucked her to death, and they and the only strength that she had left was just to arrive at the door, drop dead, and grab the door by the hand <laughs> of the threshold. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, and listen to this fucking gangster, this pimp. Listen to this. He said to her, get up, let's leave. It's not like he didn't know what, it's not like he didn't know what happened. It's not like he sent her out there. He, obviously he was, he understand what's going on. But this motherfucker has such disrespect for this woman. There was like, bitch, get up. <laughs> but there was no response. Of course she fucking died. Fucking train, uh, fucking town ran a train on her. He put her on the donkey and went home. Now, this is when shit gets dark. What What do you mean? It, this wasn't dark enough? Oh, no. This, this is when shit gets dark. When he got home, <laughs> he took a knife, grabbed his concubine, and carved her up into 12 pieces. The fuck? Let me repeat that again. When he got home, he took a knife, grabbed his concubine, and carved her up into 12 pieces. Oh, my God. Then he sent the pieces throughout Israel. Everyone who saw the sight said, Nothing like this has happened or been witnessed during the entire time since the Israelites left the land of Egypt. Take careful note of this. Discuss it and speak. The end. <laughs> Christ. 
Holy shit! And you thought the Red Wedding was hardcore. Red Wedding ain't shit compared to this. Holy f- <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, if you didn't get it, I'm gonna give you the, the resume, the, the resumed version. Dude was a man of God, quote unquote, uh, had a side chick, living her, banging her for four months. Chick was like, fuck it, you, if you don't put a ring on it, I ain't fucking you no more. Dude decided to put a ring on it. Then the father-in-law was so enamored with this man of God, quote unquote, that he made him live in his house for almost five days, feeding him and whatnot. But the dude was like, okay, I just want to drop this bitch. And maybe the father, uh, the father of the chick was like, he, like, he's going to throw her to the side. I just got to keep him in here and make sure he doesn't, you know, throw her on the side. So I just got to keep him in here. So the dude was like, fine, fuck it. I got to leave. And then he tra- grabbed the side chick. Though he married, but side chick nonetheless, uh, grabbed her, threw her on the donkey and went on to, and took the wrong side of town, went to the wrong town. <laughs> the, 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 the first flag that he should have seen was nobody was attending him when he stood in the town square until the old man came in and took him in and, uh, just watching how that beautiful display of uh, people just respecting women back then and you, women complain about now i mean i don't see anyone now throwing women into a multitude of gay dudes saying bang this the dude is not available bang this and we're like you mean we gotta fuck a bitch we gotta fuck a woman ah damn (laughs) okay well with that beautiful note uh this has been the husky podcast this is sure is gonna go down well uh, this is gonna be great. Uh, I'm sure that, that, uh, a lot of backfire is gonna come out of this one after some people listen to it. I just wanna make the, uh, clear this up that I'm not making fun of the Bible. Uh, I am merely enjoying the story as for the darkness that it is because I do have a sense, a dark sense of humor. I'm not knocking the Bible for having this. If anything, kudos for having such a raw story in it. I mean, because people just think, well, a bird showed up and the bird decided that this guy is going to be this or that. They just concentrate on those type of stories and they don't know that the Bible is a lot more darker than they think. <laughs> There's a lot of savage imagery there. I mean, they would put some metal albums into shame. And uh, it's not that I, that kind of shit I enjoy. And I'm not saying that the death of the woman was merited. On the contrary, I laugh because people did not give a shit about the woman and they were like, um, you let a woman die, uh, this woman is dying and you guys seem not to give a shit about it? What the fuck? So, uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, on that note, let's end the podcast there, let's quit, uh, let's quit while we're out ahead. Uh, this has been the Husky Bible, probably on the last podcast ever. <laughs> we might get canceled after this one. <laughs> uh, and this has been the Husky Bible again. Uh, how many times I've said it already? This has been the Husky Bible. This has been the Husky Bible. This has to be over. Uh, and I mean, what else can you say after hearing and listening to something like that? Uh, take care guys have a great day I hope that you can sleep well after listening to such a beautiful story like this okay guys take care bye